You're using GarageBand wrong. Maybe. In this video, we're going to talk about five things that you're probably doing wrong in GarageBand for Mac and what you should be doing instead. The first thing you're probably doing wrong is not making use of GarageBand's user patches. Let's say you've completely finished recording the different tracks for a project, you want to start mixing and you're going to start with the bass, for example. Chances are you start out your bass mix the same way every time, with maybe some compression added, a basic EQ setup and maybe a particular bass amp preset before tweaking those effects and adding any other stuff that your mix may require. Well, instead of manually setting these effects up every single time you come to mix a bass track, make your life easier by saving those basic core effects as a user patch. Get your basic starting point mix set up the way you want, then in GarageBand's library window, select Save at the bottom. Name your patch and from now on, when you want to load your basic bass mix starting point, just highlight the track you want to apply it to and select it from the user patches menu in the library window. Set up basic mix starting points for other core track types like vocals, guitars or drums and you'll seriously streamline your mixing workflow. The second thing you're likely doing wrong in GarageBand is not making use of the arrangement track. I get so many messages from folks asking how to do things like add extra space at the start of a project or insert an extra verse into the middle of the whole thing. And the arrangement track is a great way to do this. In a nutshell, you can add arrangement markers through a project to create different sections like verse and chorus, and then even move these sections in the track area to rearrange your project. You can add the arrangement track to your project by clicking on track in the toolbar and selecting show arrangement track. You can then add different sections to your arrangement track by hitting the plus icon here. So when you're setting this up for the first time, the arrangement marker begins at the start of the project and each additional arrangement marker you add starts at the end of the previous one with no space in between. You'll get the most use out of these arrangement markers if you set them up into every section of your project. That way you can rearrange the entire project as and when you need to. The arrangement markers are eight bars long by default. You can resize them by hovering over the edge of a marker until the resize icon appears and then just drag and drop to the size that you want. You can also rename your markers to reflect their places in your project. A good example of how this can be especially useful is if you have a project that is pretty much completed, but you want to add something like a kick-ass intro to the very front of the project. Instead of going through the arduous process of selecting all your individual regions and then dragging and dropping them into just the right place, you can simply record your intro at an arrangement marker at the end of the rest of your project, and then, assuming you have arrangement markers already set up throughout the rest of your project, just drag that intro to the very start of your project. Much easier. If you enjoy a bit of loop surfing, you'll already be familiar with GarageBand's loop browser. But did you know you can gain more insights about these loops than just their name, beat length and whether or not you've favourited them? Head over to GarageBand's preferences menu, click on the loops tab and at the bottom there, check the box marked display original tempo and key. Now when you open the loop browser, each loop will have its tempo and key next to it. This in turn means you can sort the entire library by key or tempo, as well as allowing you to better match loops to your project key.
All right, why are you not using keyboard shortcuts? Instead of clicking wildly all over your screen like some kind of Neanderthal, just to do things like open smart controls, select all the regions in your project, or create a new audio track, instead take a wee while to learn GarageBand's keyboard shortcuts. Now, with the click of a few keys, you can control pretty much every aspect of the program, vastly streamlining your workflow. FYI, I've put a link to the full list of GarageBand's keyboard shortcuts down in the description box below this video. And if you could give the like button a wee tickle on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. You're probably already using GarageBand's Psycho Region to capture multiple takes when recording real audio. And if you're not, well, you really should be. More info on that here. Try to do the same thing with a software instrument region, though. Instead of recording multiple takes, your new recording will merge with the existing recording every time that playhead jumps back to the start of the Psycho Region. If you'd rather have your software instrument track behave the same way that an audio track does when using the Psycho Region, open GarageBand's Preferences menu, click on the General tab, and where it says Software Instrument Recordings, click on the Cycle On drop-down menu and change it from Merge to Create Takes. Now when you set up a Cycle Region to record a software instrument, Instead of subsequent playhead passes causing what you play to merge with previous recordings, you record individual takes that you'll be able to choose from as normal. Right, those are five things that you probably were doing wrong in GarageBand. Maybe, feel free to tell me just how wrong I was about that down in the comments. And if you're after more tips on how to make the most of GarageBand for Mac, Watch this video next.